Hello everyone, Stakuyi here, and welcome back to my channel. One of the things that I had proposed a few weeks ago was for me to start doing reactions to different things, from games to movies, TV shows, etc. Things that show battles and different stuff in history, and just trying to see whether or not they are accurate. Just my reaction to what it is. Now, the first one that you all wanted, by an overwhelming majority, was Ghost of Tsushima. Which is actually really interesting. It's one of those games or things that I actually have not seen or played. It's one of the ones that perhaps I want to, but it's also something that was a huge hit a few years ago in 2020, for those of you who don't know the game. And what I thought that I would do is I would look at the opening scene, the opening battle from it here that everyone was telling me, oh, you need to watch this, you need to check this out, it's so cool. And I figured that that is something that we should do today. So... Sit back, relax, or I guess get angry. I don't know. I guess it depends on exactly what it is that I'm going to be seeing, reacting, or saying. But that being said, let's go ahead and open this with the opening battle, the Mongol invasion battle scene from Ghost of Tsushima. Okay. invading our home. That's like the first thing I noticed. I, I don't know, if it gets closer. They are brutal. That thing! Relentless. Wait a minute. Unstop. Okay, hold on. I'm glad it shows this. The leader's armor looks a bit better. These guys, the ones down here, the red here, if I can go back slightly. Where is it? This. This is not armor from the 13th century. Okay, so this 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 takes place during the Mongol invasion of Japan, which occurred back in the 13th century, and the, the armor at that time for samurai was very different. It's not like what we think nowadays here, right? The armor back then, it was more plain, and simultaneously, it was it was way bulkier. It was it was bulky, large pieces. Like what you see, okay, you see these shoulder pads that they have. The headpieces look weird, like the headpieces belong several centuries later, but the shoulder pads, the way that they're designed like that, is that these were designed to go against arrows. That's like the whole point of it. This armor that you see is like the standard basic armor of what you would see for a foot soldier slash samurai in like the, the, the single Kujidai in the, in the 15 and 1600s, like the age of war in Japan, like its period of great civil war. This armor is closer by that because, okay, here's, here's how the samurai fought. The samurai fought as mounted horse archers. That was the whole point. Like, their primary weapon was not the sword, as Hollywood like tr would try to imagine, or anything like that. Their primary weapon was the bow, the yumi, and the yari, the spear. And this is how they fought. They would fight by riding into battle and having almost archery duels with other samurai, where they would be riding around shooting arrows at each other, and that was that was the point. That That's how they did it. So when you are riding on horseback and you are aiming your bow outwards, your shoulder would have this large pad-like shield that would be running down it. And then when you are firing your arrow, the enemy is also firing arrows at you, and that would, if you got hit, it would more than likely hit your shoulder. This was the shield. This was the thing that you directed towards your enemy to protect it, since the Japanese bows, what they were using were these things called yumi, and they were, I mean, yumi literally just means bow, but it was these massive war bows that were huge, like they were taller than, than, than a human, like they were taller than people, and when you were aiming that off a horse, there was no real way for you to have a shield. So your armor, the shoulder pads here, this was the shield. So this part is better. This is not accurate at all for how these these foot soldier guys <laughs> look. Also, they have the classic two swords, it looks like, here. Yeah, they have the two swords. Like th This belongs several centuries later here. They are brutal. Relentless. The Mongols definitely were. Unstoppable. In many cases, they weren't, yeah. That is... that is true. We are 80 samurai. Against okay. an army. The 80th samurai. Fighting to slow the invasion. Today, I die for my people. Okay. There must how be thousands of them. Fitting. That, that is exactly how they would have helped themselves. face death. 
and defend our home. Okay. Yeah, not bad. Tradition. Courage. Honor. They are what make us. This headpiece, he, what he has, this is closer to what you would have actually seen. With the wide, like, flanging out, the, the, this is what more so what you would have expected. Because, again, a lot of this was for A, intimidation, and B, because the wide of it this was designed to protect against arrows and different things like that it still is more of a it, it still belongs a couple centuries late like the way that the couple told like the way this is constructed is belongs later but it's still it, it's, it's better than the, 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 the this one this, his helmet like this this is not what you would have more than likely seen this, this is not how this is constructed this looks way, way we are samurai this is way oh! Go break their spirits. Hey! Ships, those look good. Outsiders, send your finest warrior to face me. Ah, duel, yes. Murder. Ooh, armor. Okay. okay. Batty. Big, big batty. Okay, all right. Wow, that is some fancy armor for it here. Uh, that's, that's very video game-esque. <laughs> okay, we need to break this down. Actually, this is a great scene for it here because it has multiple of everything. Okay, so first off, the duel. Yes, actually, that's very fitting. If you recall what it is that I said in the beginning, if any combat is likely to break out to into individual duels, like what you see in Hollywood and all these things, it is more than likely going to be the early samurai because the way that they fought was like duels in battle. Like when you would have a battle, there would only be like a couple dozen or hundred guys that would be fighting. And when they would fight, they would be challenging each other to duels when they would fight, like, that's how battles were fought, effectively. You don't see the large-scale armies and formations fighting in Japan really until you're going into more of the, uh, like, the the late 14th into the uh, 15th century. Like, that's more so where you start to see it. And then into the 15th century and then the 16th century, that is where you're seeing, like, the Sengoku Jidai. That is where you were seeing, like, not even the 15th century, it's the 16th uh, and then the... 17th century well i mean it's part of the 15th because like 1475 arguably around that time but anyway that's where you start to see larger scale army and formations these guys would fight effectively in duels with each other and every battle would open up with like a one-on-one -on -one duel like as a matter of honor like that is something that you would do like that that makes sense now the armor the armor this is very video game-esque like it's obviously based off the mongol style you can see from the fur that's fitting the pauldrons look way too big big on this from how it was structured this this is more fitting this right here this is good this is a bit more elaborate but this is also fitting with based on the fur fort here these are closer this looks more like a queeris his leg skirt armor like this is pretty damn good this is some nice stuff but the chest piece feels off the helmet fancy very video game-esque but also it's still within the same style this armor though over here this is far more fitting because here's what it did the, the Mongols, their armor was something called Lamellar. That, that was their primary thing that they used. And what Lamellar is, is a series of interlocking plates that would be bound together by, by string and cord and things like that. And it could be made of wood, could be made of leather, could be made of metal if it was available, which it oftentimes wasn't. You had to make do with the resources that you had. You would use this in interlocking plates to make the skirt the like the chest piece the helmets like everything that that's what it would be like so this armor like what this guy over has here like made out of leather this looks far more like what it is that i would expect the armor here this is also very stylized and good and this is also a very good piece from what i would like the thing is the thing is the mongols conquered many different peoples so they incorporated a lot of different aspects 
but you they always used the resources they had available at the time. This is fancy and video game-esque, but it still carries the same theme. I am Haru Nobu Adachi, descendant of the legendary Yoshi Nobu Adachi. Yes, okay. Th this, when, when you went into a duel, that's very fitting. So what they would do is typically when you would start a duel, you would claim your ancestor, like where you were from, you would give your title, you would do this. Like all of this was as a kind of formality in the first place, and also as a method of intimidation. Because I am this person son of or descendant of the legendary this like you would you would trace back to your ancestors for this noble line that has created you and that you are a great warrior descended from a line of great warriors and that is that is who you are very fitting in attitude okay okay oh okay well um, there's two ways to interpret that. I, I guess I think it's, that sounds weird to say. There's two ways to interpret that. Uh, first off, it is iffy. It could go either way as to whether or not a Mongol leader would probably accept a duel. If this is on the step, like if this is within Mongolia and another rival challenges you to a duel, you are more than likely going to accept the duel because in front of your men, in front of your family, you cannot appear weak. You need to take the duel, and you need to crush the opponent. In this case, this is not Mongolia. This is an invasion into a foreign land. There's no reason to abide by their customs for anything. Th then it's more likely for him, I guess, to do this action. It's just interesting, because if they were in Mongolia, this is more likely not how it would go down. He would genuinely be regarded as... He, he would be regarded as weak. And probably someone in his own clan or one of his followers would go against him. Here, maybe not. Samurai! Do you surrender? Cowards without honor deserve no mercy. No mercy! Okay, okay. all right. Yes. No, no wait, why are you charging? Why are you... No, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Um, why the hell does he have a sword? Why, why is he Is there counter charging? Okay, hold on. We got some issues here. We got some issues. Um, first off, opening this, like this scene. Okay, this is perfect to start. Well, it's not perfect, but, but it fits. When, as I said before, they fought as mounted archers. That was their primary thing. That's everything they did. So when samurai would begin battle, you would begin with a barrage of arrows. You, you, this is how you would fight. So, starting that off, fine. Fire arrows, no. That's not what they would do here at all. The, and that's the thing. Fire arrows are such a, it's such a trope that is used. It, it's an easy cinematic trope because people use fire arrows in order to show visuals much more cleanly, more impressively, etc. In reality, they were not really used. You would potentially use a fire arrow if you were trying to set a target on fire that has already been covered in, like, oil or something like that. Like, let's say that you sabotage an area or a, a boat or something like that, and it's covered in oil or something like that, and you're about to light it up. Firing a fire arrow at it, that makes sense. You are going to want to fire more than one, like what they would be doing here, because there's no guarantee. In fact, a lot of the fire arrows that are fired would end up going out before they ever reach the enemy. This is done specifically on both sides just for visuals. And then the charge. They, sh they would not do this. They would not do this. They, they, they're going into battle. They're charging with swords. Instead of arrows. Oh my, wait, everyone has swords. Literally, why does everyone have a sword? Okay, here's, here, here's, here's the thing, here's the thing. As I said before, samurai at this time in the 13th century, they primarily fought as mounted archers. That's what they did. So did the Mongols. They, 
the primary weapon that both sides should be equipped with right now are bows and arrows. With their primary side weapon being a spear. Swords were not the primary weapon. This is not what was used. I mean, yes, the, what they actually do here, what it shows here, that I think I can see from this, this is a Mongol saber. And the Mongol sabers were very effective weapons, very good to use from horseback, and they were designed specifically for good cutting slashes. But you would more than likely be using spears and especially bows. Where are the bow and arrows? Like, they're firing from what? The boats? From, like, the cliffs? Where, where are the arrows coming from here in the first place? <laughs> Also, it looks like he's using a katana here. The katana did not exist at this time in the, in the 13th century. They used a slightly straighter blade that was longer called a tachi. And the tachi is something that was used from horseback because it had greater reach. But again, it's about it's about reach. The, the greatest reach you could have is, is a bow and arrow. Also, they're firing all these arrows and artillery in their That, that's a bit odd. The hairstyles are everything going here. Oh, boy. You know, if you had a bow and arrow, you probably saved him much earlier by just shooting him. We've lost so many. We have to keep pushing Lord Sakai. Even if it costs us our lives. As a command, Lord Shimura. Some of these guys got hit with arrows. Men, we must hunt down the Mongol leader. Right, Everyone is with me. Soldiers, and I guess they lost their horses here. No Even Mongol there. dog, cut them down. Again, everyone has not seen a single spear the entire Okay, the main the main guy, he had a uh uh it's not the uh, dollars that he used to try and spray the like the Chinese population that would be but that man actually was a bomb. Hold on, hold on. This guy, this guy, the, the, this is a, that looks like a Dao. That's like the Chinese great sword saber. Why does no one have a spear? Well, that being said, the way this is broken out, this is the, this is the crazy thing. What you are seeing for all these individual little fights going around with all the different people in here is actually realistic-ish. Like, ish. It's still, of course, it's a video game and it's taking liberties with it. But if any group or people were bound to be breaking off into individual fights with people, it would be the Japanese in the 15th century. That, that, that's kind of how it Just not with swords. You would see bows and arrows. And maybe spears. If they got close. <laughs> This is, here, 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 here's one of the points. Here's one of the points. That, 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 that This is where I have to... I know I'm stressing this enough, but I have to say it with swords. Swords were the weapons of nobility, and they were expensive. Swords, with all the iron and everything they used, those were expensive. You were far more likely to be using a much cheaper spear just as a general weapon for it here because like especially if a sword breaks like the the cost and expense of it you would not equip an entire army here like this with swords That is not another round of shield like that. Ooh, that actually is a hard cat. Almost like a small buckle of shield. Music though. The music is good. Oh, that's Set it here. There is only one part. The scene is good. Is that a villain? I am Mongol leader and NDP. I'll fight beside you to the end. That no. That actually is quite fitting. Okay, so all this destruction, everything that you're seeing, this th this is not... Yes, it's a thing that's done for visual effect. Oh, I think there's something else coming up. 
Yeah, even the farms, everything is burning. Okay, so the way that the Mongols operated is if they came up against you, you had to surrender. And you didn't just have to surrender, like, um, within a few weeks. No, if they told you to surrender, you had to surrender then. Because if you didn't, if you resisted, they were going to kill you and everyone. Like, that, it's a tactic that they specifically use in an effort to instill fear in people. Like, to show people what would happen if you resisted them. That That is real. That's how they would act. They would, at this point of resisting, go to effectively liquidate the island. The Mongol leader. I'm ready, Uncle. We end this together. Well, wait, hold up. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a damn minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. How far are these... How far are they away? So they're going in... He's like what? He's like what? 15? Maybe 20 feet away from the... They're like 15 or 20 feet away from... This is the leader of the army, right? This is the leader of the force. And you are... Arrows, maybe. Depends on how close they are to him in the first place. But there's a still a high chance of hitting him. But... Artillery... Wait, you're firing artillery within like feet... Of the leader of your army. Visually, it looks crazy, but... Logistic, or, like, not even logistically. Uh, realistically, that's also terrible. That's... God, whoever's manning the artillery in there would probably have his head on a plate just, like, within hours after this. You do not put your leader at risk like that. There's been a very liberal use of artillery in this so far. If they wanted to do anything, you would have seen it more along the lines of the, um... You would have seen it more along the lines of the... What is that scene? Like, the scene from 300 for, like, blotting out the sky with arrows. That is, like, the first thing. That's what should have been done. Hey, there is an arrow! Speaking of arrows! Hey! Now he gets shot. Now he gets shot. Okay, there's... There's something. Grandson of Genghis. Wait, what did he say? Genghis. Cousin of Kublai. Kotan. Grandson of, Kublai. of Genghis. I don't think there was a Kotan Khan. I, I could be wrong. I mean, he had a lot of grandchildren, so it's possible. But Brother, I... You are a warrior. I can see that. You trained your whole life for this. And you have won battles that lesser men have called unwinnable, yes? Silent. It's fitting. Again, that, that, that's... But while you were sharpening fun. your sword, do you know how I prepared for today? I learned. Good. I know your language. Good. Your traditions. Yes. Your beliefs. Yes. Which villages to tame and... Wish to burn. Yeah, it's exactly like what I said before. So I'll ask you once again, Samurai. Do you surrender? Silence. Honestly, no. The attitude, the attitude that the characters have demonstrated stuff is very good. It both evokes the feeling of the, it's the drama, but simultaneously that is that is the pride that they would have held themselves to. Until death.
Is that it? Press it. Uh, this might be the end. I guess this is the creation of him as the ghost. Yep, it's about showing he's still alive. And that is the end. Well, like, I, I will say this. I will say this. Considering what I have seen from other historical games, this does a fairly good job. The armor, in a number of cases, of course, it has, like, the gamey aspects that's showing, like, extra decoration or just a level of standardization, like what you can see over here on the guys. Like, this is not the time period. This is not what they would have looked like at this time. The The sword issue bothers me. I would have... If you had just seen, like, them brace with, like, a line of spears or just... Even if, even if, like, from this, if they had fired off... Where's that scene? If they had fired off a barrage of arrows continuously, like, not just a barrage of arrows, but if they had continued to fire until, say, quivers were empty and then charged, it would have made more sense because you know they're they're fighting to the death anyway. Like, they know that they're going to die. That's what they're riding in there to do. The weird part is firing a single barrage and then just charging. Like, you're going to be able to take out a lot more enemies at the distance. It's done for drama. And it it's unrealistic. It's not how they would have acted. Their equipment, everything they're using there, it, it it's not quite right. But visually, it looks really cool and does make me want to play the game. The setting, the setting, the, the ships, the music, the grass. The grass looks phenomenal in here. It makes me want to play the game. It looks very cool. There are, of course, historic, like, historical errors, as there's always going to be. But it's still a very visually impressive game. And the attitudes of the characters are still very fitting. I like it. There's, of course, issues, but I like it. And I do hope that you all enjoyed this video. I hope that you liked it, and I want you to give me suggestions in the comments down below as to what it is that I should be reacting to slash analyzing next. Please let me know there. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the bell button for notifications. Doesn't matter if there's 100,000 of you, if only like six people ever get a notification that there's a video out in the first place. And again, please let me know what I need to do next. I hope you enjoyed today, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Goodbye, guys, and thank you.